It's Mike. Better get this. Hello? Yeah, Mike, how you doing? What? We've we got a Chevelle to go look at? Cool. What year is it? Oh, 1972. Yeah. Heavy Chevy. Oh, I didn't make too many of those heavy Chevys. That's pretty cool. Where's that? Tennessee. Oh my gosh, we gotta drive. Well, that's a little bit of a drive, but it's a heavy Chevy. Is it in good shape? Yeah, sounds good. All right, get the trailer hooked up and uh, I'll call Uncle Larry and we'll head down to Tennessee. Yeah, all right. Oh boy, Mike says he's got a heavy Chevy. They didn't make two. Let me, how many look? Let me grab my book here. Yeah. Let's, let's look this up real quick. Heavy Chevy. Okay. Looks like they made 9,508 Heavy Chevys in 1972. And he said this one has a 352 barrel, so they made 2,588 uh, of those. And uh, he said it had a uh, just an open rear end, 308 rear end, a, a 52 bench seat said it had on there so that's the cloth seat i think let's see here let's what does it say about heavy chevys in my my cool book about uh data and id guide by my buddy dale mcintosh and i'm sure he'd be real interested in this heavy chevy but in 1972 it was the uh, rpo yf3 code Okay, and like I said, they made 9,508 of them, which was increased in 19, from 71, where they made 6,727. So the uh, heavy Chevy only came in the 1C37 series body. Any V8 except the L LS5 454 could be ordered because the 454 could only be ordered in an SS Chevelle in 1972. Any transmission was available, including a floor-mounted three-speed manual. Uh, okay, so he said it had a manual transmission. must have the three-speed manual transmission. Options included black accented grill, just like the SS-equipped Malibu, but without the SS emblems. Special side stripes, heavy Chevy decals on the hood, front fenders, and rear deck. Special domed hood with locking pins. 14 by 6 rally wheels with bright lug, lug nuts and center caps. And you could choose from black or white stripes on the decals, except when the vinyl roof was painted was white or black, then they had to match. Um, other things is the YF3 option did nothing to enhance the base 1C37 standard sport coupe. Had all the same... Spart ha, Spartan interior, uh, same rubber coated floor, rubber coated floor, door panels, dash, etc. Without some of the paperwork showing, the car's VIN was a uh, YF3 option. You're just not going to know that. So that's interesting. Unfortunately, something as easy to verify as, as matching number drive line would not conform to the YF3 standard because the drive line components had nothing to do with the YF3 option so cool so hey let's head down to tennessee and take a look at this boy look at marky he just had to go <laughs> hey mark meldrum meldrum's monster garage and we're here in east tennessee looking for chevelles two-seater or one-seated <laughs> we'll take them any way you can get them <laughs> Meldrum, meldrum's monster garage and we're down here in tennessee today and we're looking for chevelles and we looked in this barn and lo and behold, look at we pulled out. Oh, 72 Chevelle. And just not any 72 Chevelle. This is a heavy Chevy. Look at that. Here's the real deal, folks. Heavy Chevy, Tennessee, outhouse, whole nine yards. I tell you, this is beautiful. Car started right up. Bought it from this good old boy that Mike met. And I'm gonna give you a, a walk around real quick. But uh, the deal is done. This is coming back to Ohio. Oh my gosh, look at this. Like I said, it's a real deal. 
Heavy Chevy. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at the interior on this. Now, this came with an original three speed, but there's a four speed in there now. Original bench seat. It's got uh, bucket seats in there now, but you can see it's got a uh, pretty basic interior. Some wood grain. I'm not real familiar with heavy Chevys. I got to do some research on this, but uh, it's looking pretty good. No rust on this sucker. Got Larry and Michael over there. Chevelle Hunters has had another successful Chevelle hunt. Mike, come over here and open up the trunk on this, or Larry. But uh, I tell you, look at this thing. Let me get real close to in here. Mike's gonna grab the keys. This is the best part of getting a car out of Newport. Between Newport and Denver, Tennessee. So you know if it's Tennessee, guess what's gonna be in the trunk? Oh yeah. Got a little moonshine there. See that time, Reitler? We got a little peach, got a little grape, got a little strawberry. I think we're set for this year's show. But look at this trunk, original trunk. Paint, paint spatter, original spare tire in here. Non very, car. very cool. Non posy. This heavy Chevys were basic, basic Chevelles with a little performance in them. This has the original 350 in it. Let me go up, pop the pop the hood, and we can look at the engine real quick. There you go. Starts right up. Hopefully, I got the. Uh, Hopefully, I got, I'm letting the clutch out. Hopefully, I'm not going to move. Oh, yeah. Let me get it out of gear. There we go. Motor's running real smooth. Oh! Sounds real good. Back here to the exhaust. I don't know what kind of exhaust it has on it. We haven't really had it up on the uh, lift. But it sounds good. Got the Tennessee plate on there. Guy stuck it out in front of his house and boom, we got a phone call and boom, made a deal over the phone. Went down and got it this weekend. So very, very cool. Got the original sticker here. Very faint numbers on here, but you should be able to read those. Mike says one paint job on this. It's very hard to tell where they did paint it. But uh, pretty cool. Like you can see the uh, gear shift is for a bench seat car. We got a different aftermarket radio in it. That's all right though. Uh, Mike says he's got a bench seat for his 72. We'll put that back in here. Got the build sheet on it. So, uh, yeah, pretty pretty cool. And here, give it a couple revs for you. There you go. We'll go over the uh, body tag in a few seconds, but uh, very, very cool car. Yeah. Now Mike got the original three-speed manual transmission, so you can see that set in here. And this is a it's a steel case. It's got all the shift rod linkage and whatnot. It's even got the U-joint still attached. But uh, very very interesting that we got the original transmission with this. It currently has a four-speed transmission in it. All right, now that we got this heavy Chevy back in the garage. I'm going to do my best Patrick Glenn Nichols to go around the car and show you what's going on with it. And uh, it's a very nice, original car. I'll call it a barn find, just like Patrick Glenn Nichols likes to call it. And uh, the first thing uh, I'm going to walk over to 
uh, just as Patrick does. And he always goes over the uh, body tag, which is located right up there. Now, about the only thing that the body tag is going to tell us on this car, and I'll show you a picture of it, is that this car was, in fact, a 1972 Chevelle. It was made the uh, fourth week of March in 1972, and uh, there's no option codes uh, listed on the body tag like you see some body tags, which is understandable because, I mean, this was a base base heavy Chevy. I don't even know if you call this Chevelle. <laughs> um, and I'll tell you why I say that, because uh, we're going to take a walk around the back of the car and I'll, I'll point some things out uh, that, that will tell you this is truly a heavy Chevy. So uh, the body number is uh, 13437 and the paint code is 2626, which is, of course, this uh, blue. Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head what that blue is. Uh, Mulsamic or something like that. But uh, as we look around here, and uh, we know that the car came with a 350 because in 1972, this was the first year they started to denote the engine size in the serial number. And if you count over one, two, three, four, the fourth character is in fact an H on this car which denotes that it is a 350 cubic inch uh, motor, which is in the car and we believe to be original. Uh, and uh, you also can see an original tag here, which states it's a 350 cubic inch two barrel carburetor. And of course you've got all your dwell and timing and spark plug gap there, all right? And then over on this side, You've got the engine cooling system. Now it appears that somebody has changed out the uh, radiator on this car uh, because I see plastic tanks over here. But uh, as Patrick would say, understandable for a 50 year old car. And as you can see, somebody has uh, put on some chrome valve covers, chrome alternator and uh, headers. But uh, very original other than that. Well, take it back. Oh, take it back, spark plug wires are different. And of course, somebody put a power brake booster on here and added on uh, disc brakes, I believe. Uh, this normally came with four wheel drum brakes. Okay, now let's, uh, of course, uh, as we look at the, uh, comes with the same front end that a SS Chevelle would have. So that's uh, blacked out. So many times I see uh, people add the extra chrome uh, stripping in here. That's not correct for a SS Chevelle or a heavy Chevy, but it gives it that uh, mean character with the uh, blacked out bezels and the blacked out front uh, um, dash there, or uh, grill, kind of cool looking. And as you can see, it's got amber um, front marker lights and of course, uh, there was a mixture of different lights up front. Some were clear with the amber uh, behind it, and then some were like this, were completely amber. All right, so as we uh, roll around to the back of this car, I'm gonna show you something. And this is also on the build sheet. Like I say, it doesn't say Chevelle anywhere on this car. People get into all these debates. Is it a Chevelle, a Malibu? Well, whatever. This is a heavy Chevy. And the rear emblem is not here. Now, what should be here is a sticker that says heavy Chevy. Um, now, if you look at the build sheet, and we'll take a look at that, uh, it actually says BW1 delete rear ornament, which is kind of cool. So... And then the other thing you look for on the build sheet to denote that this is a heavy Chevy would be the YF3 option, which means it's a heavy Chevy. Pretty cool. And uh, of course, L65, 352 barrel. M11 denotes the three speed transmission. And that had the uh, PL2 E78 14 inch black wall tires. Of course, you can see it's got a Fenton style wheel on there. That's not a Krager, that's a SS Fenton wheel. 
and uh, I, they look 14 inch. Uh, the other thing that the car came with was uh, AM radio. And of course now it has uh, an aftermarket radio and it did have a rear speaker. Now I don't know uh, if it had dual rear speakers, but you can see somebody, uh, somebody used some extra cool padding there to put in those uh, speakers. So pretty cool. Well, while I'm back here and I got the keys out, I'm gonna pop the trunk open. And as you can see, Mike brought back some uh, Kool-Aid <laughs> from Tennessee. But uh, what I wanted to show you was a couple different things that are still intact on, on this trunk, which is kind of cool to see. Of course, the uh, jacking instructions up here, very, very original. This is a non-Posi car, so we don't see the Posi uh, um, limited slip differential sticker on here. And uh, one thing I, I don't know, I mentioned this in another video recently, but starting in 1970, they put a little dimple here. And the dimple tells you where the split in this uh, weather stripping should be. And you can see it's slightly off, might be due to shrinkage or whatnot. Uh, but uh, very close to that dot on where that split is. You never want to put the split here because uh, it'll just split, it'll pull itself apart uh, because it's on the corner with this lip up here, okay? And then uh, some other cool things that people always like to see. This has got very original trunk and you can see the uh, original spatter paint on here. Uh, appears that they went over the uh, hood latch there and uh, you can see they went really far up. They were pretty generous. Of course, it doesn't go all the way up, but uh, pretty generous on how they uh, applied this uh, spatter paint. Pretty, pretty cool. Of course, we see, I believe to be an original uh, spare tire, which is, which is cool too. Let's see, it's a Uniroyal, uh, glass belted, uh, very cool. So, um, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, when they did a water test on the trunk, they would put a couple hash marks here. And you can see one of the hash marks there. And if you look really close, you can see another hash mark there. So that tells you that it passed the uh, water test. All right. So some cool things in the trunk of this vehicle. All right. Now let's, uh, oh, another couple things I noticed was, uh, can see, still see a partial VIN number here, which leads me to believe this is an original quarter panel. And I can't see any uh, repair work that was done on the quarter panel from looking on inside of the trunk. And it's got a partial uh, VIN number right here. So pretty cool, original quarter panels there. All right, now, one thing I didn't see on the uh, option list, but it's on this car, Maybe it is. I'll go back and look. Got some door edge guards on there. It's always scary to put those door edge guards on. You never know <laughs> when you're going to scratch the paint. But uh, some really cool stuff to look at here. Of course, we've got the original sticker to the car, which would have the serial number on the car. It's very hard to see, but I've got a good picture of it. Tells you the weight of the car uh, in, in, and the date that it was manufactured. And of course we've got the, uh, remember I said it had the E7814, tells you what uh, uh, you need to do for your pressure. And then it's got a, a cool oil change tag on there from, I can't even read, what is that? Ozzy, I don't even know what that is. All right, anyway, getting around to uh, the inside of this car. If you look at the, um, it reminds me of a uh, Monte Carlo with this uh, wood pattern. But uh, that is correct for 1972, the wood pattern, grain pattern there. In 1971, you would see white. See, I've been doing my research on these heavy Chevys. Pretty cool. So uh, now, heavy Chevys, just like any other car or any other Chevelle, you could get uh, a complete uh, gauge package here with the round gauges, but... Uh, they didn't get this on this heavy Chevy. It's got the swept uh, gauge. Got about 73,000 miles on it. 
So everything's basic, basic, basic. No air conditioning or anything. It doesn't say Chevelle anywhere. Um, somebody put in this uh, cool Hurst shifter. And remember I told you it had a four-speed transmission. And then they put some uh, additional gauges down there. But you can see all the uh, pedals down there for shifting gears. All right. That's a lot of fun. Now, I got some uh, got some better steering wheels uh, laying around the shop here. Maybe we'll replace the steering wheel. But uh, let's look at the, the headliner. Appears very, very nice. I know. What am I doing? Let me get back out. Why? Headliner's in good shape. Uh, could use a cover for the uh, um, light there. So you can see the back seat, seat's in good shape. But it didn't come with bucket seats. So uh, we've got a bench seat in stock. So we plan on replacing it with a bench seat. Makes it uh, makes it fun. Of course, that shifter will work good with a bench seat. You can see how it's uh, got the big curvature there. So... There's your Patrick Glenn Nichols walk around of this uh, heavy Chevy. And um, I'm sure we'll do some uh, test drives on it. Uh, one thing I'm, I'm very, I'm scratching my head on it was, uh, and I'm going to look closer and closer, but uh, you can see with the hood pins and, and the wires here, the wire was attached way back here. And I'll investigate, I'll look for some holes here to see if I can find it. But I it was very curious to see that they connected the uh, wires way back there. That's very interesting. I think all the heavy Chevys did come with hood, hood pin uh, sets. So you can see uh, it's got the, uh, the crowned uh, screws there. So I believe that to be original. And of course it has the heavy Chevy emblem right here. And you can see that it has a uh, domed hood and we could see the fence under there. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention about the heavy Chevys, remember, cheap, cheap, cheap. Uh, so uh, you'll see that this car has some carpet in it. It should have a vinyl uh, mat there. And uh, we were looking at this the other day and uh, I was hoping, hoping that, oh, that door's hard to get open. We were hoping that uh, it had the vinyl underneath here. So we pulled it pulled it back a little bit and we can see that somebody's put some, uh, I don't know, dynamite, dynamite, I mean, uh, dynamat in here or some kind of insulation. So I don't know if we're gonna put the, uh, I don't know if we're gonna put that uh, vinyl flooring in here, but uh, maybe, all right, another neat thing to note about this is it does not have hideaway windshield wipers. So you can see uh, this plate is very different than the hideaway ones. You can see they're setting up high there. And you can see the uh, motor is not the, it doesn't have the round motor. And it has more of the squarish motor that you see there. So pretty, pretty, pretty cool. All right, got uh, plastic inner fender wells. Boy, those command the big dollar nowadays. And uh, they are marked GM Canada. Um, and then on the, on the right-hand side, it's marked RH. So uh, pretty cool to see those. Uh, those are worth their weight in gold nowadays uh, for people looking to restore Baltimore cars with these original plastic inner fender wells. So, very, very neat. So, that's your tour of the heavy Chevy. And, uh, like I say, we'll, we'll take some test drives in it and uh, see how it performs. Uh -huh.